Hello, everyone. My guest today is Sam Eitzen. He's the co-founder and CEO of SnapBar, an Inc. 500 company that uses photo and video experiences to help planners, producers, and marketers create better engagement at events. He also co-founded Keep Your City Smiling, a gifting company that supports small businesses struggling as a result of the pandemic. Sam, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah. Obvious question. Pandemic means no events. No events means no photo booths. What are you spending your time on today? Yeah, two pivots. Uh, Keeper City Smiling being one of them. We took our team and moved to sell gift boxes to individuals, which then resulted in us finding that companies and a lot of our corporate clients would actually do great with large orders to like work from home. Uh, and, like so basically care packages for their team members. And then we also developed a virtual photo booth uh, software that we are using for a lot of virtual events that our clients have pivoted to. Interesting. So. So when you were, so let's talk pre-pandemic for a second. Give me a sense of scale of the company. What did you do in like 2019 total revenue? Yeah, about 3 million in 2019 uh, on track to do four to five 2020. Um, we, at for a photo booth company, were pretty big. I mean, quote unquote, right? Like it's a pretty small industry. And yeah, our events were primarily, about 85% of our revenue was corporate. 15% was private events, like social events, weddings, et cetera. And what do you think that, so now let's break down 2020. Let's say you do hit 5 million in revenue. What's the breakdown? Oh, goodness. Probably the breakdown would be 70% Keeper City smiling. I, you know, to be clear, I don't think we're going to do 5 million. We've been hit pretty hard. Revenue dropped off a cliff. But if we did, yeah, 70% Keeper City smiling and 30% virtual photo booth. It's a new piece of technology. A lot of people don't even understand what it is, uh, but it's basically like a browser-based photo booth that is a fun add-on to virtual events that at times can be boring. Well, Sam, I mean, dive into this. This could not have been easy. I mean, 2020, I mean, you're on a freaking rocket ship. You're earning awards like crazy. Are you bootstrapped or did you raise? We're bootstrapped. Okay, well, that 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 at least gives you a little bit more flexibility, but it's still painful yeah. as heck. I mean, so yeah. walk through, I mean, March comes around, things start shutting down. You probably start getting cancellations in, I imagine, what, February, late February, right? Yeah, floodgates open up. Uh, we noticed the first massive hit to our company when South by canceled, South by Southwest. They were, we were activating there at a bunch of different uh, events and sub events. And that was a pretty big blow. After that, yeah, mid-March, the floodgates opened. I think we lost about three to six months of earned or like potentially earned income overnight. And sales for, since then have continued to be just absolutely dead. And not only that, but we had refunds to give. We take deposits. If we don't do any work for your event and it's further than 30 days out, you are owed your money back. So we bled hundreds of thousands of dollars in the, when that first started happening, which is why we had such a significant and kind of like aggressive pivot outside of the events industry. We were so pessimistic about when they might come back that we felt if we didn't do something that could earn cash fast, uh, we would have to lay off our entire team. And e-commerce e was kind of our, our, our guess that that might work. What we were surprised by when we pushed to e-commerce was that, again, it was these brands, big companies like Microsoft, Google, that would purchase 200, 300, 800 boxes in one go, brand the boxes, and send them to all their you know, people uh, on various departments and teams working from home. And so we were spending so much money acquiring individual customers on social media that we kind of have shifted focus and said, you know what, we're going to be a corporate gifting company that focuses on connecting big brands to local businesses, local vendors, which hence the name Keep Your City Smiling, right? It's a gift box company, but the twist is that it's very intentional and it only supports small business. Let me make sure I understand that. Then I want to dive sort of more into how you've done this. I mean, this is remar a remarkable pivot uh, if you're able to pull it off. So if Microsoft is in Seattle, and they want to support a local small business hit hard by the pandemic. Let's, I'm going to make this up. Let's say it's a, um, it's a local like picture framing shop, a mom and pop shop. They weld metal picture frames together. Yeah. Microsoft would essentially buy 800 custom done metal frames from the local small business and then ship them internationally to all the Microsoft employees as like a gift. That is basically what can happen. What the one step that is kind of work that we're making it easy is that we're, selling or packaging a keep Seattle smiling box for Microsoft Seattle employees. But I'll take another company, another tech company, for example, that had headquarters in New York, Austin, San Francisco, and Seattle. They were able to buy 800 boxes and ship them to every single employee that were based out of those cities 
with five small business products like craft coffee, tea, chocolates from the cities where those people were based to connect them to local brands and vendors. But because we also uh, like customize and curate the contents, it's absolutely possible that Microsoft, Microsoft say, hey, we really want this. We really want you to find a small business vendor that makes cute little metal picture frames. Please include that. And we handle the logistics. We brand the box. We, we tell the story as well of maybe the founder or founders behind that little metal picture frame company and try to connect the people in Seattle um, or, or globally. I mean, it really depends, right, to like the story of those small business owners. Gosh, building the logistics to, to, I'm trying to think about what could you reuse from a photo booth company to source local small businesses to find products that you could sell to bigger enterprises in those same locations to sell back to the local employees. Like that doesn't seem like there's a lot of reusable no. technology there. Not a ton. I'll tell you, there's three pieces of technology we're reusing where we had a big printer that wrapped photo booths that we used to brand the boxes, meaning we can control branding um, and printing inside the in-house. We have we use old school photo booth printers to print strips. And that's where we tell the little stories. We call them who you're keeping smiling um, or who you're helping smile. I can't remember exactly the terminology that kind of profiles the the vendor or the the uh, founder. And then we have a we had a warehouse that used to store and ship photo booths. And now it's been transformed into a box sending business. But that's about it. The team had to pivot. And I mean, not pivots a weird word, but, you know, had to completely transform what they were doing. And people that were wrapping and branding photo booths spent eight hours a day folding cardboard boxes. It was not glamorous. This is incredible. My gosh, has anyone has anyone interviewed you like hardcore about this to capture this sort of full story? We've done some like we had an ink profile. We've had a couple like Forbes and, uh, you know, like articles written about the pivot. Um, but no. Well, what do you think that what do you think? So you've talked to like traditional reporters and all that. What do you think all of them have yeah. missed about the story? I think it takes someone who understands business and entrepreneurship to realize just how drastic the switch was. So pivots are a very sexy thing, right? But pivots are often, here's what I used to do in person events, and I've pivoted to virtual events. But our pivot was really more of like, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even know what, if it's considered a pivot necessarily. We had to create a new business and we did it in about eight days. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at you going like, I don't care what you do the rest of your life. If there's any opportunity for me to like give you money, I want you to have my money because you've built a team and you executed literally launching essentially a new business overnight. Yeah. Yeah. It was about eight days from concept to when we launched the first website. And then we basically took pre-orders for two weeks to buy us extra time as we sourced small vendors from our first box, which was Seattle. Um, and we sold in the first three months, we did 500,000 in sales um, with no marketing spend other than like amateur PR. March, April, May are the first three months. Yeah, uh, we start. We launched the website on March 19th. So it was from March 19th to May 19th or yeah. And before we go back and just talk about, again, South by canceling and the financial impact that had on you on 500 K in sales on the new business model, what's your margin on that? Obviously you have to pay for the actual products. It's your cost of goods sold yeah. is probably way higher than the photo booths, right? Way higher. So our product margin gross product margin is about 40% net business margins, maybe five because we're very new at this and I'm sure we're relatively inefficient in some ways. Whereas when we were running a photo booth company, our product margins were 300%, maybe more. Yeah. So you'll make 25 grand on 500 can top line sales. 5%. Yeah. Give or, give or take. Yeah. Honestly about that after everything's said and done. Okay. So let's go back to February for a second. Just like, let's act like we're taking a snapshot of the business. Um, how much cash was in the bank? Uh, about $700,000. And what was team size? 18 people or 17 people full time. Okay. 17 people. And what was at that point your run rate? How much revenue were you doing per month? I mean, it varied about between 200 and 400,000 a month. Okay. And profit margin on that, I imagine was way higher than 5%. Yeah. Like I said, very, very high. I mean, I mean, pro product margin was like 300% uh, net business. I think we were at basically 33% to 40% net business. Yeah. So on, on 400 grand, let's just use 200, to make it easy on 200 grand in top line sales in a month. I mean, you're pulling down 75 grand in profits as a bootstrap entrepreneur. Amazing. Okay. So this is February. Uh, 
you, I'm living, I'm living in Austin. So I was watching the South by thing going, Oh my gosh, we're going to be like a virus hotspot. If this thing happens, they have to cancel. Yeah. I mean, would you agree it was the right thing to do? I think so. Yeah. CES just announced three minutes ago that they're canceling for 2021. Right. I mean, you don't want to be liable, but you also don't want to be irresponsible in spreading this thing. And while there's so many things that are unknown and there are ways to put on safe events and I'm a huge proponent of that because I'd love for my industry to come back. I don't want the virus to spread. So it's a, it's a hard position to be in. Mm. So Adam, you said hundreds of thousands. Do you know the exact amount? You had 700 grand cash in the bank. You had already accepted pre-orders for future events that canceled and asked for refunds. How much do you have to refund back out? Gosh, I honestly can't remember. It was pretty brutal. We refunded maybe 50 to 70,000. We had a ton of other cancellations where we were going to be getting paid and that just dropped. So it was like a combination of us refunding like payments we thought were going to be coming in, not coming in and then future sales deals in the pipeline, basically just vanishing. And so over the, it, it wasn't that we had this money in the bank and all of it went, it was that a bunch of it went and then nothing came in. Yeah. So true or false. I mean, your cash balance after refunds, you had about 600 grand to work with to execute a pivot in something under 30 days. Uh, less because of payroll was so high and we didn't let anyone go at that point in time. We've had to let two people out of the 17 go since then. Um, and we also had a PPP loan granted to us. If we, if those things hadn't happened, we'd be looking at maybe 250 K left. Yeah. How so much was the PPP was loan? A, a 217,000. That's nice. Yeah, that's, that's great. And this is exactly, yeah. this it was supposed to be the exact use case for where to use yes. PPP effectively. Yep. Um, yep. Interesting. Okay. So 17 people. So, okay. So you, so what is, what is the conversation as the leader of this company? Do you, are you the only founder? Do you own hundred percent of the company? Uh, I'm 50, 50 with my brother. Okay. So I mean, yeah. I mean, what is on earth is the conversation you guys are having? You come into the meeting, you, you guys got the email that South by is canceled. Everyone is wondering, oh my gosh, that means we're losing revenue. They know it's a big account for you guys. Yeah. What do you say in the office that day? What's that motivational speech sound like? I mean, it was tough because first off, the 700 that we'd saved up was truly our life savings. It wasn't so much like, yeah, we were probably not the best, like, strategic thinkers when it came to how to use that cash. And so we'd let it pile up thinking we're going to hire and expand. The problem is we didn't have a great plan to do it. So it was very difficult to see a lot of our personal future all of a sudden shrink and shrink and shrink. That was like an emotionally difficult time for both of us as founders. But we decided we are going to make this through. We're going to not just survive, but we want to actually build during this time. And that's kind of what we pitched to the team. We are, we're, yes, obviously the goal is survival. If we survive this thing as a company that's 100% reliant on in-person events, we will all, that will be a huge win because there'll be a lot of competitors and other people that we used to say lose bids to that will not survive. And that's the sad reality of the events industry right now and many others, to be honest. And then beyond that, we didn't just want to survive perpetually for X amount of months into the future. We really wanted to try to reinvent ourselves and grow something and do things that when events, if events come back like they did, we'd actually be better positioned to serve people, get even more clients, have even greater products. And that's been the goal. So keep your city smiling has been the focus piece, but our virtual photo booth software is, has been pretty incredible. And in the past month and a half since we launched it has generated about 140 K. Um, and the profit margins are much higher on that side again. So, so explain that to me. Explain if, if I'm listening to this interview right now, the podcast interview that you listen to yeah. Nathan's show and they're thinking, yeah, I run a virtual event. Should I try this thing? How, how does it work? Yeah. So Photobus used to be used to create user generated content at marketing events, music festivals, conferences, right? Here I am in the Google photo booth with some awesome background and some cool thing, whatever. There's so many different types. We took that same concept and put it onto a browser so that whether you're on your phone or tuned in from your laptop or desktop or whatever, you could take and generate branded content. Now you'd say, isn't that like it's Snapchat and Instagram? I mean, it is, except that you can't ask people who are coming to an event to download Snapchat or Snapchat or Instagram to take branded content. So you have to democratize it or at least like make it completely inclusive. So it's a browser based system that the client owns. So if you are asking for surveys or lead data, you own it instead of 
I don't know how you would even do that on a platform like Instagram. And so you're you're essentially letting people create fun branded content. We use back AI background removal to put you on your school campus or to put your the event sponsor logos behind somebody and you have now content with their logo and some funny thing to say, here I am tuning into the Gallup work conference from home and maybe you post to social media, maybe you don't, but that's valuable to me. Sam, where is this thing? Where can people go? What's the URL? Yeah, if you go to the snapbar.com, you'll see that we have virtual solutions and it's our top virtual solution, which is a, yeah, it's just called virtual booth. And what, so I'm going there now. What is it? Is it a, is it a, is it a Chrome extension? No, it's literally, so you you can try it actually, Nathan. Um, if you go there, if you scroll halfway down the page, it, when you finally get to virtual photo booth, click on the conferences one. There's like a try a demo and there's a little button. You can try some different events. And if you click on the conference one, it's going to open up a separate browser and it'll say, welcome to this fake conference. Enter. You'll give access to your webcam, et cetera, and snap a photo. You'll brand it. You'll get the idea. So is this real? Is, is Ted's using you? Yeah. Yeah. So Ted used us for their, as they pivoted to a virtual, um, you know, Salesforce is a big client doing events around the world for their teams. Um, we did a really huge event for St. Jude's prom, a, vir- a, a virtual prom that they did uh, a few months ago. And so everything from schools, commencement ceremonies, uh, we've had even have had some weddings, lots of sales launches and conferences and internal team summits um, can use this. And look, I mean, it is just a photo booth. It's not an absolute required piece of the virtual event, but virtual events. Well, no, but I mean, you're also doing like lead capture, photo gallery surveys, custom stickers. I mean, I can see where this becomes like the B2B enterprise version, desktop, Snapchat. Yeah. No, I mean that people are using it like that. It's pretty exciting. We've had people ask for, you know, packages in one sense of 50 to 60 virtual booths that they could use over time. And so they get their own unique URL, right? It would be like ted.virtualbooth.co and they can just, they can spread that link to whomever they'd want. Um, and yeah, there's all kinds. What's the pricing model on this? Is it one time for the event or is it like a SaaS recurring sort of thing? So right now it's one time. It's not a piece of SaaS, uh, yet. So yeah, we, uh, there's no reason for you to pay for it right now after the event's done. You could invent some reasons like store the UGC content, you know, reporting, et cetera. But yeah, yeah, we're going to move that direction right now. We have one developer, one guy on our team has built all of this um, in the past four months. Sam, what and- a freaking story, man. Holy cow. This is in- this is incredible, man. OK, very cool. Well, we're, I just we're out of time here. We, I learned a ton listening to this. What a story. I can't wait to sort of follow you and see what you guys kind of pivot and iterate to. Uh, but let's wrap up for now. What's your uh, number one favorite business book? Ooh, um, good to great by Jim Collins. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, I study the uh, Satya Nadella quite a bit from Microsoft. Number two, is there a uh, sorry, number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? It have to be base camp. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? About seven. Seven. And situation, married, single kids? Uh, married with three kids. Holy, you are a busy man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 32. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, not to buy a Ford Focus brand new off the lot. <laughs> Stupid, but. Small, small, simple financial decisions like that, I think, impact long term. Guys, the snapbar.com did three million in sort of photo booth revenue in 2019. We're on track to do five million in 2020, but obviously lost almost all of that revenue because of COVID. They've done a remarkable job. They had 700 grand in the bank in February, team of 17 people, payroll to meet. South by gets canceled, which is one of their biggest contracts. They have to put out a bunch of refunds. They have basically 600, 500 grand in cash in the bank to completely reinvent the business in seven days or less. They've launched a photo booth solution, a virtual photo booth solution for events, and also a way for enterprises to support their local mom and pop shops. Keep your city smiling. Check it out, the snapbar.com. Sam, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.